Hello and welcome to another Wolf Time gaming video. Staying with the Star Wars Legion theme this week, we're now going to be painting up Padme Amidala. Now, not necessarily the most active of characters in the Clone Wars, but hey, you know, we all love a bit of Clone Wars, we all love Padme Amidala and we want to get her on the tabletop with the rest of our troops. Um, leading the, the Clone Warriors with, alongside Obi-Wan Kenobi and the recently released Anakin Skywalker as well. Um, I've been really excited to actually get to this one. I've been painting up quite a lot of Star Wars Legion recently, uh, as you may have seen if you've been keeping up with the videos. If not, go and check them out after watching this one. Uh, before we get started on painting this one though, let's get that kettle on. Okay, so let's get started. Now I know I cover this in all of my videos, uh, but the first thing as soon as you've built your model is to get a base coat on there. Now I've actually gone with a Games Workshop spray paint called Wraithbone. Now this is because I wanted that sort of a creamy start rather than using the grey sear, uh, and I thought it might look quite effective. Um, starting with this sort of a colour. As you can see, I've just sprayed the whole model, got it stuck on the base. Giving it a really good spray. You can see it's taking none of the detail away from the actual model itself. So I really do recommend these contrast sprays at the moment. I think they work really, really well. So the first step in painting the actual model itself and getting some colour on there is the actual face, or at least I try, always try and start with the face. Now, the first step in doing the face is the actual eyes. Now, you may have seen me do this plenty of times in the past when painting the models, but I will go over it again. Now, the, what I do is get a very small tip brush, a little bit of black paint. In this instance, I'm using Corvus Black, and I'm drawing a line from essentially next to the nose outwards. Now, what this does is give you a, an outline where the eyeball would be and gives you a little bit of definition um, where essentially you'd, you'd lose that if you just went with a white straight on the top of, for the eyeball um, and uh, that would sort of blend into the skin, or at least that's what I've found anyway, but obviously each to their own. The second step is the eyeball itself. Now, this can be really, really fiddly because what you want to do is get a little a white, bit of white paint and draw a line in the center of that black line that you've already done. Now this, as I say, can be very, very fiddly to try and um, stay within that black area. If you go over it, don't worry. You can get a little bit of Corvus black paint and just touch around the edge of that again and then it'll sort of tidy itself up a little bit. Um, and it, it does look really, really good and it's well worth it. Trust me, you'll see it when we get to the finished product. Now, the final step in painting the eyes is the eyeball itself. And all we do is grab that little bit of black paint again and just drop a little bit of paint in the uh, in the center of that eye or to the side if you're wanting to have a look in a certain direction and you're feeling a little bit more brave in where you're actually painting it. If you do mess it up, don't worry, just start again. It's as simple as that. You know, this is all about learning. This is all about us getting what we can on the tabletop. If you really don't want to do the eyes, just go straight on to the painting the skin, which we'll go on to next. And we'll do that by using our first contrast paint. And I'm actually going to be using contrast Gulliman flesh as a base coat, essentially for uh, for the skin for Padme. Now you can put this on quite thickly. You can see, you know, what I'm doing is going. Um, a little bit more thick around all the defined areas around the nose around the mouth and um, that sort of areas uh, all against the hair itself because you want to add a little bit of shadow into that area maybe go a little bit thicker around the neckline that sort of thing just to give it a little bit of definition really and also just inside the ears as well this always really does help the contrast paint drops straight into the recesses really really nicely um, without any real effort you don't have to highlight or anything like that what you can do if you want to is grab uh, another contrast paint like fire slay fire slay flesh sorry um, or something like that just to put around uh, all of those recesses to give them that little bit more definition but as i say you don't need to 
So the next step is actually painting uh, some of the model itself or uh, the, the actual clothing itself. And to do that, I've grabbed a little bit of contrast skeleton hoard. And what I'm doing is painting the boots, the cloak that she's wearing, uh, the belts, all that sort of thing with this uh, skeleton hoard. Now, it's, it's a really good paint. Um, it's not necessarily what the, the you could see on screen. That's more of a gray cream color. Um, but I think this works really well. I like the way it looks. I think the skeleton hood looks great. Plus, I had it in on my painting table already, so why not? Um, you know, we're not always about screen accuracy, though. That's what I do try and stick with uh, with a lot of the models that I paint. Um, I think it looks perfect though, um, and it, it it works really quite well. She's sort of wearing the same sort of clothes that you saw on um, when she's been running around and on on the uh, TV if you've watched it and that sort of thing. So. You know, with this white com compared to this grey sort of a colour, and I, I think the the skeleton hoard works well. Uh, but that's uh, enough of me trying to justify why I've uh, gone off canon a little bit there. So with the hair, um, another contrast paint, contrast wildwood, straight on the top of the hair, no messing around. Uh, stick it on there. Obviously, you want to be really, really careful, but going around the face and that sort of thing. I do always say try and use a small tip brush because if you go with a thicker one, I know a lot of people recommend a thicker one with the contrast paints. Uh, you just can't control the paint. I much prefer to, to keep dipping that little brush into the, the paint pot than you go in too thick. Now the next step is actually painting the white itself. And as you can see that we're already sort of white with that wraith bone base coat. But if you pop a little bit of uh, the contrast paint apothecary white onto the, the, the actual model, what it does is drop into all those recesses and give you some really nice definition around all those lumps and bumps and things that we have around the model. Now go really really thick with this one but do keep in mind that it, it's really really thi uh, thin and it will run and it may run onto those areas that you've already painted so do be careful when go going into those areas or start with the white and then go back on over it after uh, with the other colors and that sort of thing it's really up to you how you want to paint these now the, the actual pistol that she's holding is the it's like a really silver bright silver shiny color so i've gone straight for a lead belcher uh, for this one um it, it oh it's all silver as opposed to you know some of the uh, traditional sort of star wars weapons that have almost got like blacky sort of a uh, uh, recessed areas this so it needed to be quite bright so i've just put, gone straight over the top of the base coat with a silver rather than grabbing a black first but there you have it that's the the model itself is complete and look at that we have used hardly any paint at all to actually get a looking like this you know i'm quite pleased with this and you can play with it on the table like this as well you don't need to put any basing on there or anything like that if you don't want to however i wanted to to fit in there with the rest of the force so i've whacked a little bit of the citadel martian iron earth just on the base what i did do is paint the whole base black first because what the citadel martian iron earth does is um crack and it separates itself to make it look a little bit more realistic the problem is if you leave it the base color white underneath you end up with white cracks and that doesn't really make sense unless i suppose you're trying to get a sort of a frosty feel in which case you wouldn't go for the martian iron earth anyway however i think it looks absolutely fantastic like this you don't really need to add any more just put that black paint on there frame it frame the black uh, around the base as well and stick the iron earth straight over the top but there we have it. That is the model complete. But thanks very much for watching. Make sure you go and check out all the other videos I've got at the moment. There's loads and loads of Star Wars Legion videos on there. Also got a lot of Star Wars Armada stuff coming up with the release of Clone Wars as well. So do make sure you subscribe. Um, but thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.